to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless say it, God is great, say it. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory. Put your hand together. That's what he's done. 
excited. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Ebenezer Baptist Church, 9504 Alcahani Neck Road, Exmoor, Virginia, in the hamlet of Wardtown. I am grateful. No, I am excited. No, I am happy that you have found your way to in-person worship or virtual worship here with us today. We are looking forward to a wonderful worship opportunity. We are grateful that you've joined us. We are excited that you're going to be in worship with us. And we pray that we say something, sing something, do something that will help you get through your week and give you what you need in Christ. Once again, welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I am grateful tonight that you have joined us in this midweek teaching moment. Might we bow our heads in a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, it's once more and again that we assemble ourselves, thanking you for this day, even in the rain, in the midst, the mist of rain, the wind, you've been extremely kind to us. Now, God, we pause to study your word in this most trying time in our life, in our culture, in our world, in our country. Tonight, our country is in a terrible state of affairs, another senseless killing of children. Meet us tonight in this word as we dissect this moment, as we look at it from a eye of scripture. Bless us virtually tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, my heart is very heavy tonight. After witnessing last Sunday the senseless killing of black people in the grocery store in Buffalo, New York, and then on yesterday, I believe it's somewhere around 19 persons, children, second, third, fourth grade children, and other persons who have been senselessly taken. My heart is heavy tonight. My anguish over all of this senselessness. And even in our local rural area here, there's been senseless drive-by shootings, putting persons' lives at risk. Tonight, I wanna talk from the subject, senseless actions senseless actions. The word senseless is defined as happening or done for no good reason and with no purpose. What we've witnessed and what we are witnessing in our world can be categorized as senseless. We're living in a senseless time. We're living in a time, my brothers and sisters, where it's not even hardly safe to do anything. You know, there once was a time when you were, you felt safe in your home. You, 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 you felt safe just walking around, lounging in your lounging attire in your home, you're not worried about anything happening to you because you were protected from the outside world in the confines and corridors of your residence. Tonight, that is not the case. We've, what, we've witnessed senseless drive-bys for whatever reason. Didn't come tonight to talk about, about who did it, how it was done, that is, that is not my area tonight. My area tonight is to talk about how senseless all of this is. 
children get up, the parents put their clothes on them and get them ready to catch the bus or drop them off <clears throat> to school. And they don't realize that they won't see their parents anymore. School teachers got up that morning, got the coffee, did the meditation, whatever they needed to do, kiss their, kiss their companion, text someone they cared about. And on their way to work, stopped by the local convenience store, got a drink, got a snack, went to work, and before three o'clock, their life had been snatched. I want to lift the question tonight. How can we end this senselessness that we see taking place around us? How can we eliminate it because you know, just like I know, those of you who were born in the 60s, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even in the early 80s, this is not something we were accustomed to as children. We weren't, we didn't, we weren't raised in this kind of time. And so tonight, I want to look at this. I, I want to I look at it. I want to uh, scotch ourselves and get ourselves in line. And I want to look at this. Tonight, uh, let's look at some pictures here of what we're dealing with. These children, these precious baby children, these innocent children, these children who did not harm anybody. They were going to school. Look at the smiles on their faces. Look at the joy that's evident in their face. Look at how happy they were. And then you look at uh, the grocery store. People were going to the grocery store on a Sunday afternoon. I'm, I'm reminded of them going there to get snacks for moving night or to pick up a few items that they needed for a late Sunday dinner or what they needed for the week as they prepared their lunches to go to work. And this is the scene of murder. Senseless actions. How can we end this senselessness that we see taking place around us? A couple things I want to lift tonight, and I'm going to bid you good afternoon. Number one, we need to learn how to pull back from religious rituals and push towards meeting the needs of people who are in need. My brothers and sisters, senseless actions occur when the person who is committing the act doesn't get the help they are so desperately reaching out for. Now, I want you to understand, I want you to understand something. I'm not making any excuse for what these murderers did. But what I am going to suggest tonight is that somewhere along the line, these persons needed some help. Mental, emotional help. And people missed the opportunity to see in their actions that these people needed help. Let's go to Micah. Let's go to Micah tonight. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 in the Christian Standard version of the Bible tonight. Let's, let's go there. Let's go there tonight. Mankind, he has told each of you what is good and what the Lord requires of you to act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. I want to suggest tonight Thoughts and prayers are fine, 
but they have not stopped the continuous killing of school children nor the devious acts that are taking place in our local neighborhoods. We hear it all the time. Our thoughts and our prayers are with them. Yes, that's true. Our thoughts and our prayers should be with those persons who are mourning the loss of senseless actions. But we got to do more than have some thoughts and some prayers. We, I, I was listening to a preacher uh, who shall remain nameless on one of my social media outlets uh, yesterday, and he was saying, uh, we've been praying. We've been praying. We've been, we've been calling on God. We've been praying for, for, for years and, and not saying that God has not heard our prayer. But at some point in time, we've got to look at the scripture that says faith without works is dead. Thoughts and prayers are fine. But they ain't stopping none of this stuff going on. God is requiring us to act act justly towards our fellow brothers and sisters who are reaching out for help. People, there are some people in the world who are not able to handle the stress and the strain of life and they turn to other avenues to relieve themselves and sometimes the avenues that they turn to turn out to be fatal for not only themselves but for someone else. Micah uses a word. He uses the word justly. Now, justly simply means being, a, being in accord with what is morally right. Now, it's morally right that when we see someone who had need tendencies, what are need tendencies? Tendencies that let us know that was a need in the life that needed to be met, but it was not being met. And the result of the need tendency not being met is they do something or they act out in some kind of way that causes precious lives to be lost. It is morally right that when we see someone who had need tendencies that we do all we can to get them the help they need because by doing so, you could be saving not only their life, but the lives of countless others. Had the people who knew this uh, murderer and had observed him in his moments while he was at work, where he, wherever he hung out, and they had, they had eyewitness accounts that have reported and, and been testified already of some of his actions. Had they reported that and dealt with that accordingly, we may not would even have a need to teach this tonight. We walk by and sit by and worship with and work with and hang out with and eat with and party with Persons who have need tendencies. And we ignore it because we say it's not our dog to fight. It's not our cause. It's none of our business. But as soon as they act out of character and their need tendency causes them to go in a direction that proves fatal for countless others, then we want to start talking about thoughts and prayer. And my brothers and sisters, it's time out for thoughts and prayers. It's time now for us to put in to some action to get these people the help that they need. My brothers and sisters, being religious and practicing certain rituals and church traditions will not keep children or anyone else safe and nor will it save lives. We are so caught up in this religious culture 
of certain rituals and how things have to be a certain way. And if they're not a certain way, it is against the will of God. And while we are still debating and talking about certain rituals and how certain things need to be because that's how it's always been done, people are dying. People are being uh, made to be afraid to live in their homes. People are having to relocate because of things that are happening in their families. Parents now have to bury innocent children. Teachers are, are dead. Why? Because we are so uh, stuck on what the ritual is. We must, as Micah suggests, not only act justly, but we must love faithfully. Somebody ought to type in the comment section. I must learn how to love faithfully. Love faithfully. Type it in capital letters. Love faithfully. What does that mean? That means that I don't just love um, with a, a, a sense of giving but I love you enough to help you get the help you need. I'm gonna be faithful in my attempt, thank you Lord, to give these people that I know, that we know, give that person that we know the help they need. We're gonna lead them not only to Christ, but we're gonna lead them to a therapist. We're gonna lead them to a counselor. We're gonna lead them to the law enforcement and say, listen, this person seems to have some tendencies. I work with them. I think you need to check them out. And then the law enforcement, I'm going to walk heavy tonight. The law enforcement has to do more than say we can't do anything until they do something. So what you're saying to me is you can't make any moves or do any investigations or do any questioning until I've murdered 19 people. Something's wrong with our culture. Something's wrong with the way the system is set up. Something is wrong with the way we carry out and do in this country. Isn't it funny? And President Biden, uh, this is one of the times, one of the few times thus far that I've agreed with him. President Biden said yesterday that, um, or yeah, yesterday, uh, to the fact that this happens only in America. Now, I'm not gonna quote and say that's totally correct because I haven't done proper research to see if other countries have mass killings of children in classrooms and mass killings of one particular race and leave the other race alive, kill one race in grocery stores. I've not done the proper research, but what I do know is very rarely do I hear in the news of other countries in this world going through this sort of murder, this kind of killing. So it's something wrong in our country with our system where you can just walk around and go in somewhere and not be stopped and nothing done but with you before you act out. Nothing can be done until you act out. Oh yeah, walking heavy tonight. Because 19 children were murdered. People died at an elementary school. It wouldn't have made the matter whether it was a high school or college, because we've had it happen in high schools, we've had it happen in colleges, we've had it happen in anybody, anywhere should not be murdered if you're doing, if you're threatening my life and it's my life versus your life, I understand me protecting myself. I'm all for that. But these children and these teachers and those uh, customers in the grocery store weren't bothering anybody. They weren't spewing any hate. They weren't uh, degrading or disrespecting anybody. They weren't talking about any other particular race. They were going about their daily routine and for no reason other than the fact that somebody needed some help, they had need tendencies, now we are looking at mass death in two cities in this country in the next seven to ten days there are going to be multiple funerals. Why? because somebody had a need tendency. And you who are listening to me tonight, you know somebody that's got a need tendency. 
and we need to help them get the, the care that they need before something bad happens. All right, let's move on a little further, if you will. Showing love, and I think I touched on this a little bit, isn't just done in gifts and accolades, but showing love also means that we do all we can to assist people in getting the help they need, watch this, to be well. This is Mental Health Month. Sunday, we're going to show a PowerPoint on the necessity of understanding the importance of being mentally healthy. Me telling you I love you or me giving you everything you asked me to give you doesn't just exemplify my love for you. But my love for you also comes when I help you get, the need, get your needs met. Emotional needs, mental needs. People are dealing with things that they don't know how to handle or control. And if not careful, they will act out in a way that's unbecoming of who they really are, or who they really want to be. Let's note tonight a couple of things. Number one, this murderer needed help, but no one allowed themselves to be placed in a position to assist him. Someone knew, someone understood, someone saw some signs, but they said, just like all of us, oh, he's just bad, or he's just mischievous, or he just has a little problem, or he's having a bad day. You don't know what will cause a person to break. I'm inclined to suggest that everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has a, a moment or a point in their life where if not careful, they'll break if they don't get the right help they need. Secondly, I want you to note tonight, we, need, we meet the needs of those in need when we love them enough, watch this, to help them get their mental, emotional, and physical needs met. I'm going to say it again. Mental, emotional, and physical. Type that in the comment section. I have mental needs, emotional needs, and physical needs. Type it in the comment section, if you will. I have mental needs, emotional needs, and physical needs. I'm going to say it a third time. I have mental needs, emotional needs, and physical needs. This is what we have in us. And those needs need to be met. And if they're not met, it will cause us some detriment that some of us may not be able to handle. I have mental needs. I need to be mentally healthy to handle what is on my plate, and so do you. I need to be emotionally healthy to handle the ups and downs in life. Boy, you're teaching tonight. I, ha I have to be physically healthy in order to handle the, 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 the pressure that life brings. There are some mentally sick people in this world who are in need of a kind of help that can't come from, watch this, Sunday morning, but rather it must come from persons who are trained and equipped to redirect the mind from its current state to a state of healthy survival. Everything doesn't come from a shout. I just lost 10 of y'all. You're not going to get everything from a, from a lifted hand. There are some things that the beat of the drum and the sound of the hammer and organ will not provide you. Some people need to see somebody. I wish I had a witness here. Some people need somebody to talk to that can help them navigate through all of the clutter, through all of the clutter that is, is in their head. Let me say it a different way. Some of us need help handling the chatter. Mm. 
because you have so many things coming at you in so many different directions, so many things coming at you, so many different directions. Sometimes you can't master or control or balance it all. And when you get off balance, or when you get unbalanced, you fall. You fall. And you fall because you allow the chatter to mess you up. All right? So we, we, we get away from these ritualistic things, you know, that you just bring them around the altar and you pray for them and you, 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 you pray and you lift your hands and everything works. Sometimes we need God to show us not only that prayer works, but that therapy works. All right, let's shift gears a little bit now. Let's shift gears. Let's shift gears. Let's shift gears. No one should desire to kill anyone who is not threatening their life. That's true. You can hate a person so bad or you can hate a group so bad that you want them dead. Some of you all who are listening to me tonight, you've hated people so much that you wish them, you wish death on them. That's a person who needs some help. Why do you and I see every, see every day, who do you see every day that has characteristics that are not only questionable, but challenge the fact that of whether they are in need of some sort of mental redirection. I'm gonna read that question again. Who do you and I see every day that has characteristics that are not only questionable, but challenge the fact of whether they are in need of some sort of mental redirection? All of us know people that need to be redirected. And we can't just leave everything up to God. God didn't place us here to leave everything up to him. Sometimes we've got to take the initiative. All right, secondly, I'm going to shift a little bit now. <clears throat> secondly, we need to rethink the method in which we approach the senseless actions which result in needless pain and death. We've got to become people who are rethinkers. Let's look at Micah 6 and 8 again. Two words I want to look at, Micah 6 and 8. Um, this version says to act justly, but other versions say do justice. Type it in the comment section, do justice. Do justice. Everybody wants to have a meeting a gathering, a prayer vigil after the senseless actions have taken place. All we know to do, let's meet. Let's have a forum. Let's have a quorum. I've done it right here at Ebenezer Church. When, they were, when, they were, when the police were killing black men, I called together a community forum and had folk come down and talk. And you know what happened after that? Black men still were getting killed by the cops. Meetings and forums are fine. I'm not dissing any meeting or any forum. But we got to do more than meet. We've got to do more than just come together at, at 6 o'clock in the evening at some church or some hall or some lounge or some facility and talk about what has happened. We already know what's happened. Now it's time to put some action to what has happened so it won't happen again. Let's look at it. Word of God says, do justice. That's what the word of God says, do justice. All right? Now, we know Luke 18, 1. Men should always pray and not faint. But what about gathering before the actions take place? 
Why not meet before any of this stuff is done? We've already had multiple school shootings. We've already had multiple racial killings. How many more do we have to have in order for us to recognize that our meetings and our, our sessions that we're having, is, it need, we need to do more than gather? What about making a clergy and police force presence known in the neighborhood before the senseless acts take place? Instead of being on the highways, why not post up and put our law enforcement in the areas of our neighborhoods that are in the worst shape and let them sit there and patrol, sit there, have the lunch, sit there and watch people ride and not just do it at a specified time every week that I know as a criminal you come on Tuesdays at 12 to 4. But why not 4 in the morning? Why not multiple times you see uh, law enforcement doing these things. And I'm not saying that it's not being done, but I don't think it's being done as effectively as it could be done. Do justice. What about patrolling the parking lots of schools during the day while the resource officer is inside the school? Let there be some police and law enforcement presence on the outside. Why you can't have your a uh, little gathering on the outside there. If, let's just think for a moment. Had the local law enforcement down in that town in Texas yesterday had some presence, they were trailing this young man. He had wrecked his car. He got away and ran into the school and started shooting. Had there been some multiple daily scheduled presence at the school, maybe this would not have turned out as bad as it did. And I know what you're saying. I know what some of you are saying. We can't be everywhere. That's true, you can. But there has to be a moment when you sit down and ask yourselves, what, are, what can we do different? And then not just say what can we do different, but do it. Don't just come together for another forum, another meeting, and, and just come together but then go put some action to it tomorrow. No public school or private school should be without a law enforcement presence patrolling three to four times a day. All right? I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit a little heavy now. What about moving from a speeding ticket money-making program to a program where our law enforcement does more on the side roads and the byways, making their presence known at various hours of the day and night? We focus on speeding tickets because they make money for the town, the locale, and wherever. But why not use some law enforcement to patrol the areas all the time and do it in a manner where folk are not given the opportunity to be as, as ridiculously crazy as they would normally be. What about we move from a need to meet for the opportunity to have a photo op and have our name called to a desire to bring effective change to our meetings, listen, to our communities. Listen, I don't care about taking no picture. I don't need my picture in the paper. I don't need my picture in lights. I don't need my name in lights. I don't need to get no accolades, no plaques on the wall, no shaking of hands, no pat on the back. I don't need that. But what I do need is for the children in my church to be safe when they go to school. What I do need is for the members in my church and in my community where I lead to be safe when they go home and they kick their shoes off after they've worked three jobs and they just want to sit down and eat some ice cream and watch a movie and they can't do it because their couch is in front of the picture window and they don't know at what given time somebody might ride by and shoot through their house. Why? Because they can. 
and then we look at to the law enforcement and they just come out, take a report, and they go on and nobody's never found. But you can find criminals for other items, but you can't find them when they put lives in jeopardy. Oh, Palmer, you hitting hard tonight. Yeah, I am. You know why? Because people died last Sunday. Senselessly. People died yesterday senselessly. People's homes are being shot at senselessly. And I'm not pointing blame. I know, I know some of you watching. I know some of you going to see the rerun. I'm not pointing blame. But what I am saying is it's going to take a conservative effort. Clergy too. We need to be more present in the neighborhood. We need to get out of our Sunday morning worship places and maybe take our worship back outside, but not outside on the parking lot and the safety and security of our church. But maybe we need to go in our communities where our churches are located and have Sunday morning service there and not get upset about how much stuff we've got to take. Take the keyboard, take the drums, take the praise team and go in that community and maybe not preach that Sunday, maybe just pray for an hour. Feed some folk and pray. Sometimes presence, the ministry of presence might bring a, a, an effective change. I might just gave myself an idea for this summer. Instead of all this being in the church, dressed up in the church, doing everything inside the four walls. Maybe we need to go in, in, and I'm in Exmoor, maybe I need to go in Exmoor and have a worship service right in the town of Exmoor and just pray, not preach, not holler, not walk pews, not, not sing, people happy, but just pray for an hour. And then we go home. We need to rethink how we do things because if all we're gonna do is wait for another house to get shot up, wait, for another school to get shot up, people die, wait for another public place where people will be murdered for whatever reason, and then we wanna just have another meeting, another forum, just so we can be seen, so our name can be heard. We have accomplished nothing. Do justice. Justice has to be done. Justice has to be received. Listen, listen. Children died yesterday and people died last Sunday and our local towns and communities are being shot up right here locally and some of what we are doing is not helping nor is it easing the problem at hand. Micah 6 and 8 says what? Do justice. Now, what is justice? And I'm coming to an end. What is justice? Justice is the proper treatment for what has taken place. That's what it is. Proper treatment for what has taken place. Let's, po let's lift some questions. Are we getting justice for these lives, these children's lives that have been lost? Are we making sure our citizens feel safe in their homes? Are we doing what needs to be done to create a safe and secure atmosphere for our children to learn and play and be safe? There is seemingly no place in no place safe in our society anymore, and, and more meetings, forums, gatherings ain't the answer. The answer comes through action. Let me revisit. Let me revisit here. Let me revisit. Prayer is good. Prayer is needed. The Bible says men should always pray. But we got to have some action. Has to be some action. And listen. There has to be some honesty. I am not free from being at fault for not doing all I could do to make our community better. There are things that I could have been doing in the 20 years I've been at this church to make our community a more safer, loving 
caring, unified, and peaceful community. All of us have a role to play. You see somebody that, I'm, that is mentally going through and have need tendencies, you ought to go and try to help them. And you ought to try to do all you can to make sure people are safe and not just do it to be seen. So many, of, so many people just do this and, and wait for an opportunity like this to capitalize on it so they can have their name called and be seen. People, li we live in a culture where everybody wants to shine. Nobody wants to get dirty, but everybody wants to shine. And it's sad because we will use moments like this for shining moments. It has been said that our culture has become too dependent on the church and the government to raise our children, which leads me to number three. Leads me to number three, and I'm going to close out tonight with number three. Eliminating senseless actions will require us, watch this, to revisit the training model of years gone by. I'm going to read that again. Eliminating senseless actions will require us to revisit the training model of years gone by. Give me Proverbs 22.6 in the King James Version. I'm going to call it good evening. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. To eliminate much of what we're enduring in this horrific hour, we must begin at home with the parents teaching their children and training their children on how to live in a society as a positive citizen in the world. The present generation has all access I'm closing. Thank you tonight. But instruction on how to respect what they have access to is nowhere to be found. I'm going to read it again. The present generation has all access to everything, but no instruction on how to respect what they have access to. Our culture is wired in such a way that parents just don't feel like parenting, and thus the children parent themselves. A lack of God in the home and no respect for the one true God has helped to create this senseless culture we are presently in. My father was an avid gun owner and I've told this story a thousand times but I was forbidden as a child to even think about touching his weapons. My father had a, had a shotgun behind every bedroom door and in just about every room there was some form of weapon and I was a boy and I was forbidden to even think about touching those weapons. So much so that even when he would clean them, he wouldn't even allow me to be in the same room with him. I was in my 30s, and I'm now 46. I was in my 30s before I had even touched a gun. I'm an avid gun owner. But I don't allow my weapons to control me. I control them. But we're living in a time now where we allow weapons to control us. And we allow our children, and I'm going to say this tonight, we allow our children to see too many things and be involved in too many things before they are mature enough to handle it. 
We allow them to see things and we don't teach them what is proper and what is improper. I'm done tonight. Thank you. Children need the following. Someone to talk to. Someone to help them. Someone, because this young man that did this murdering at this school was a child. He wasn't, he wasn't but 18, 19 years old. He wasn't grown. And he had assault weapons. He had no business with assault weapons. He had no business having them because he was not properly trained. He did not understand emotionally, physically, and mentally. He was not prepared to handle such a responsibility. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. He may stray, but he won't depart. He may fall short, but he won't depart. He may mess up, but he won't depart. Child needs someone to discipline him, and that's the problem. Some of our children are not disciplined. They discipline us, but we won't discipline them. Someone who will understand them. In this culture, in this era, we need people who can sit down with children and, and understand their heart, listen to their heart, not just be a rough dictator, but children in this culture, unlike the culture that some of us was raised in, need someone to sit down and just listen before you speak because children are dealing with some stuff that some of us don't even understand because we've never lived through it. I don't know what it is to live in a home without a mother and a father. I don't know what it is to live in a home and not see my parents when I get up in the morning or when I go to bed at night. I don't understand that. I, I don't know what that's like. But this generation does. And they're missing something. And they're looking for something. And we've got to do more than what we are doing to help them meet their needs emotionally, physically, and mentally. Because if we do not, another school's going to get shot up. Another grocery store is going to get shot up. More people are going to die. I got to go. Children need someone who will understand them. Someone who will help them see they have been where they are. Children need someone that's not just going to spoil them because if you spoil them from 8 to 28, from 10 to 20, when they get out into the real world and you are not there to protect them, the person that is in charge of them, the person they work for, the person they serve under, the person they serve with is going to catch the devil and is going to give them the devil because they have not been properly trained to understand that sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the person at fault Ain't you, it's them. Children. Children. Children need someone who can help them understand the difference between wisdom and foolishness. Children need someone to help them make, to help uh, them understand the need to earn things. Some things are earned. You can't give them everything. Finally, and we got one more scripture. Children need someone who will teach them what accountability means. Make your children accountable while they're children so that when they get grown, being accountable won't be hard a lesson for them to follow. Proverbs 10, 1, Christian Standard Version. I'm thanking you for your prayers. Solomon's proverb, a wise son brings joy to
to his father. But a foolish son, heartache to his mother. God bless you tonight. In all of what I said, let me conclude by saying, love your children. Grab your children tonight if you, if you can. Find your children. Bring them close to your heart. Hug them and kiss them and let them know that you love them. My heart aches in a way that I don't know if it's ever ached before for what I see happening to our children and to our race. You're going in a grocery store to buy groceries or whatever and a person shoots you because of the color of your skin. My heart aches tonight. My heart aches because there are some children that died yesterday, won't see eighth grade prom, won't see high school football, won't get their first kiss under the bleacher, won't make it to, high, to, to college graduation, won't go on the first fishing trip, won't go hiking, they won't uh, have a bar mitzvah, whatever, things that children go through in various origins. First date, get married, have a child. These children's lives have been snatched. My heart aches tonight, not only for them, but my heart aches for the other people out there with assault weapons who are mentally, physically, and emotionally standing in need. My heart aches tonight for a system that is rigged to refrain from change. Something has to change. Too many children are dying. Too many innocent lives are being taken. There was a lady in that store whose husband was in the nursing home. She was his only caretaker. Can you imagine the feeling of the person who had to go to that nursing home and tell that husband that his wife, his caretaker, his lover is now dead? Not from a heart attack, not from a stroke, not from high blood pressure, not from a car accident, not from an aneurysm, not from cancer, but because her life was innocently taken just from a quick stop to the grocery store. I love you tonight. And I thank God for you. Let us pray. God, who at sundry times and in divers places, we beseech you tonight by the mercy of God that you will bless our country and our world, that you will protect us, that you will get down into us mentally, physically, and emotionally and change us and make us better than what we have been previously. Bless tonight our children with safety and all of us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and good night. Have you tried to match your doctor? Have you tried to match your doctor tonight? Have you tried to match your doctor tonight? Have you tried to match your doctor tonight? Have you tried to match your lawyer? Have you tried to match your lawyer? I tried to match my lawyer. Yeah, you better cut your hands right here. Say it with everything you He's all right. 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 
sound like you better you better prophesy If you got a tambourine, I dare you go to playing right now. Play right now. Play. Get ready. We're going to the world. I dare you to go to dancing right now. Hey, one, two. 